in my life right then and there. I just felt like sort of invisible. When I was a kid, uh, I was probably eight or something like that. Um, we had a couple friends who were very cool. I had a friend named Aaron. That kid was like the culmination of cool. He had this tanning cream that his mom, you know, his mom used. And uh, we were like so mesmerized by it. I remember one time I was riding my bike outside of Aaron's house. I was gonna go in just to ask him about uh, trying on some tanning cream, but he wasn't there. So I actually just walked right in. I went upstairs to where his mom kept the tanning cream and I, and I started to put it on, you know? I don't know what it was. I was obsessed with tanning cream. It was like my visibility paint, right? I was like finally seeing I didn't have a barrier. I didn't see that I shouldn't be breaking into this house. While I was putting it on, Aaron's mom came home with, uh, with her daughters. And, uh, and they started coming up the stairs. And I was still in the bathroom when they were coming up the stairs. And suddenly, the daughters come into their room. And I'm standing in the doorway. And I'm looking. And I see them. And they're sitting on the bed. They're all talking about the party that's going to be happening for Aaron. And I'm just looking right at them. I'm like, they don't even see me right now. And it's just this weird thing, like, how do they not see me that I'm right here? There were those moments um, where I felt like I didn't really feel like I was visible. I still did stupid stuff every, every now and then. I would do things that were fringe, you know, do things that were acting out, but I did them because I, was, I had this, this need for being seen. I was the guy that would climb the tree, a stupid idea to climb the tree. I would always do stupid things or I would like balance myself on the balcony. And I think all that came to a head when I, was, uh, when I was at a national park with my friends. We went into this area of the national park and they had these rock faces that would slide down, right? They had these natural springs at the bottom of, of different rock faces. And there was one particular one that I wasn't supposed to go out on. And everyone was like, Casey, don't go out on it, don't go out on it. And I, I went out on it and I stood there you know, and I was like testing out, you know, how I could balance on this rock when suddenly I lost my, my balance and, and I started sliding down this big rock face. And at the bottom and the end of the rock face, we didn't know it was there, but this was all off boundaries. And probably due to the fact that below me was a 200 foot gorge with stone. And so as soon as I slid down, I was like, Maybe I'll be okay if I just let myself fall over the edge. Maybe it's water, right? I've been so lucky with every stupid thing I've ever done that maybe there's a big body of water that's gonna catch me. But while I was sliding down, this realization, this fear that this could be my last breath, this could be it, started overpowering me. And I remember yelling out, help me, help me, help me, save me. My wife remembers hearing it, my brother remembers hearing it. I grabbed like a tuft of grass and my legs were dangling over. Somehow, some way, I stopped myself from falling over the edge. Once I stopped myself, I, I realized that I would have died. For sure, I would have died. My wife, after it was all done, she was crying. She was like scared and she hit me on the, on the shoulder. I understood at that point, it was like, my actions matter. My actions can cause a, a terrible effect on somebody that I need to be accountable for every action I take. And so why don't I make my actions positive and not negative? And uh, at that moment, I, I, I started to yeah, try to live a life where I was doing more service than, than, than taking. My wife had always wanted to adopt and I finally saw myself actually being able to adopt. The adoption process took a long, long time. It took like three and a half years. We would go and we'd have this little apartment that we'd stay in um, on, the, on this big campus where kids are running around and it's like, there's no grass, it's dirt and concrete everywhere. We you know, met our sons for the first time. They didn't speak any English. This is in uh, Haiti, so they speak Haitian Creole. When I first met them, they were like two and three and uh, they were scared and they were like, you know, who are these people that are, you know? I mean, they didn't know who we were. They were just told that we were, that I was their papa. And so uh, that first moment, I remember just like connecting with them and the apartment had a back patio that had bars all around it. And we would just bring food every day to the orphanage, and feed our kids. But the sad, super sad thing was like, our kids, you know, we would have sandwiches and we'd be in that back patio and we'd be eating those sandwiches. And all the other kids in the, in the orphanage would come to the bars 
and they put their hands through the bar wanting the food because they don't they just didn't get enough food so they all put their hands in the bar wanting more food more food more food and uh, and I could tell how powerful my kids were gonna be like it was just an amazing thing like our sons wanted to share the food with the kids every, every small action we take has a ripple right and it has an effect on people if I had just not stopped myself from going over that edge I would have died and that's the strongest experience of realizing that our actions matter that you can ever have right if you can stop yourself from death or stop somebody else from suffering those are strong powerful things that change your perspective on life. You're going to feel moments where you are misunderstood or not seen at all and, and the thing that you need to understand is that every action, every minute thing you do has a cause and effect. And so why don't I make my actions positive and not negative? Bye, 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 papash. Right? So give me a high five. So he gave me a high five and I was like, ow, ow. And, and he started giggling a little. I was like, encore, give me another one. Ow, ow, ow. He stood out like three times and, and he just started giggling and giggling and giggling. And that was like this bridge. You know, that's how we started to bond. And it was like through moments, you know.